These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. The iPhone, the most popular phone in America. On a similar note, there's the iPad, the most popular tablet in America. One company owns them both, Apple. Apple has several competitors, one of the more prominent being Microsoft. The two are bitter rivals, Apple first filing a lawsuit against Microsoft back in 1988. Since then, things haven't gotten any better, with Apple's co-founder Steve Jobs and Microsoft's Bill Gates famously sparring in public many times. But surprisingly enough, two of Apple's biggest moneymakers were made just because Steve Jobs held a grudge against an engineer who worked at Microsoft. How'd that happen? Stephen Paul Jobs Born in 1955 and adopted into a poor family. He created Apple on April Fool's Day 1976 and was fired from it nine years later in 1985. For some time, Steve Jobs became Steve Jobless. During this time, he became CEO of Pixar and created another computer company called Next. In 1996, Apple bought Next to use its operating system and Jobs subsequently gained power in 1997. This time, the company's in shambles. According to Jobs, the company was about 90 days from going broke. He successfully revives the company, releasing the iMac G3, which was the first computer that didn't look like this, and he released the iPod. When he took control of the company in June 1997, the stock price was 15 cents, adjusted for a split. In March of 2000, less than three years later, the stock price had gone up by over 700% to almost a dollar and 25 cents. Stock then cratered though due to the bursting of the tech bubble, and by the time the story takes place, most likely late 2002 or 2003, but we'll use New Year's 2003 for this, the stock had dipped to about 27 cents. Still though, now Apple had been taken away from the brink of bankruptcy and was no longer in danger of collapse. Now, about that grudge. Steve Jobs gets invited to some senior Microsoft official's birthday. Bill Gates was there too. While there, he meets an annoying person who often ran in the same social circles as he did. He would keep on bumping into Jobs, and every time he did, Jobs would come out annoyed and seething. This person was a Microsoft engineer, and he would often tell Jobs about a project that was going on in Microsoft. This project was a netbook. A netbook, back then, was basically an iPad, but with a stylus instead. Back then, people thought that using your finger to control the screen wouldn't be convenient. Most businesses thought that using a stylus would be more favorable, and anything with a touchscreen would fail. Steve Jobs? He didn't think so. Now. Some people have thought that that's a netbook. The problem is, netbooks aren't better at anything. In his own words, he said, you don't use a stylus, you're born with 10 styluses. This engineer kept on pestering Jobs every time they met about how their netbook would completely change the industry. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. The Monday after one of these encounters, Jobs came back to Apple and told his employees that they were going to do it right. He did this to, well, A, show the guy that styluses were going to fail, and B, make money, lots of it. Steve Jobs really didn't like that guy, and he really wanted to show it to him and prove him wrong. Despite all this though, the touchscreen project stalled. Apple was going to make a tablet, though they first had the idea to make a phone. The tablet project was delayed, and the iPhone project, codenamed Project Purple, took priority. When the iPhone was started, there was so much secrecy surrounding it that the engineers weren't even told what they were making. In 2005, Apple bought a Delaware startup called Fingerworks, which worked on multi-touch technology. Jobs then held a meeting about the iPhone. Should they use the touchscreen they were developing, or should they use the track wheel that was being used on the iPod? After about six months of development, they decided to go ahead with the touchscreen, and the rest is history. A couple of years later, having made the iPhone touch display work, Apple decided to revisit the tablet project, and the iPad was born. And we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. Since then, over 2.2 billion iPhones have been sold as of February 2020, and over 300 million iPads have been sold. That one annoying engineer caused this success for Apple. Small things can make a big difference. Jobs died in 2011, the day before the iPhone 4S came out. A few years after Jobs died, Apple released the Apple Pencil, which was, you guessed it, a stylus. 
So that's the story of how a grudge held by Steve Jobs created the iPhone and iPad. Be sure to subscribe and like. And thank you for watching Explained. New videos every other Friday.